Thanks for your company once again. Just Gone By was joining us as a major public forum on government's decision to convert some polytechnics into technical universities. The current session of Thought Leadership Forum is under the theme, Converting Polytechnics into Technical Universities, a Sustainable Course. About a month ago, Parliament passed a law which gives government the express mandate to convert the Accra, Kumasi, Kufuidria, Ho, Takrade and Sunyani Polytechnics into universities. These polytechnics, which will operate under the technical university system, will now have the power to offer various degree programs starting September 2016. Some educationists argue that the change of name is the usual window dressing of the challenges in the education sector. They believe if government wants to improve polytechnics in the country, it has to focus on meeting their infrastructural needs. So beyond the nomenclature, what will it take to create and sustain worthy technical universities and all the conversation that went on uh, is just what you saw before the news. And President John Dramani Mahama is continuing his five-day tour to the central region now the tour uh, which started yesterday saw the president addressing issues of education in the region and assuring inhabitants of improving the quality of education in the central region my colleague Richard Kojonyako now joins me on the phone hi Richard now what's the latest uh, in this campaign tour well after yesterday after retiring to the regional coordinating council this morning uh, the president has been meeting uh, groups uh, traders and other artisans and uh, from there uh, a crowd of ndc supporters and other people are meeting they are ready at Biako, one of the communities in the Cape Coast north constituency the president will be addressing them shortly but as i speak with you now the president uh, has not arrived from here the president will also address separate rallies at Abra and other parts of the Cape Coast North Constituency. So today, the focus really is on the Cape Coast North Constituency, where the University of Cape Coast, they have also alleged that the president is scheduled to deliver a speech, God willing, tomorrow. And they'll also be meeting with the Kotokwaba traders. Uh, the president will be interacting with them to find out what exactly their concerns are. And they will also be hoping that the president will be addressing they are concerned. So for now, the president has not arrived, but the district uh, municipal chief executive, some of them have arrived. The party regional executive and other constituent executive have also arrived. And so the place is packed. A lot of vehicles are packed here, and a lot of supporters have gathered in the party college. So basically, that is what is on the ground. Uh, thank you very much, Richard Kodunyaku. Now, this is your election headquarters. Stay with us uh, for all the latest updates. And we'll be bringing you more on uh, the president's tour of the central region in a related event. The vice president, Pa Kwesi in Misa Arthur, has been meeting some party executives in the northern region as part of strategizing their campaigns ahead of this year's election. Correspondent Rafiq Salam joins me with the latest on the outcome of what the meeting uh, of that meeting with the vice president uh, thank you very much uh, for joining me on the phone Rafiq now uh, who is the pr uh, vice president engaging in this meeting and why well thank you very much uh, this is Hashmin all right Hashmin well the vice they are in a closed door meeting and this meeting is being attended by a uh, municipal district and ministry and district chief executives in all the districts in the northern region. They are they also in the meeting are parliamentary candidates and the NDC party executives. The, the vice president later on in the day will also outdoor the campaign team for the northern region. They are still in the meeting right now too, and it is after after this meeting is not open to the media. It is after the meeting that we can be able to tell what the outcome of that meeting is. But basically, it is to strategize for the campaign for the northern region. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was my colleague Mohamed Hashmin giving us some updates on that meeting in the northern region between the vice president and some executives of the National Democratic Congress. This is your election headquarters. Stay with us for all the latest updates with regards to election-related matters. The Christian Council of Ghana has vowed to remain the voice of the voiceless despite numerous attacks on it and its outgoing chairman, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Marte. The outgoing chairman Chairman of the Council and former moderator of the Presby Church has received a barrage of insults for his comments, suggesting some politicians in the country tried to bribe him 
to shut him up. He also alleged that the Deputy Interior Minister at one point in time also tried lobbying for him to chair the National Peace Council, all in an attempt to get him to remain silent. Many have criticized him for the comments, with some saying the clergy should be more focused on its core mandate of preaching salvation rather than meddling in politics. But the new chairman of the council, Reverend Dr. Ernest Dujemfi, tells Joy News the council will remain the voice of the voiceless even amid the several attacks from some politicians. We need to understand ourselves and to understand the role of the church and uh, the role of the politician. Uh, much as the politicians serve the state, I believe that they also need to understand that the, the church is also, is also serving a certain constituency. If you look at the fact that 70-71% of this country is made up of Christians and uh, uh, close to 20 or a little over are Muslims, we are looking at the fact that religion plays a major role in this country. And the church and also religion has contributed a lot in terms of our nation building. We can go back, way back to 1529 when education began in this country. It was by the church, you know. We built all these educational institutions and we still have. If you look at health, if you go to our rural areas now, mission hospitals are carrying over 40% of, of hospitals in, 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 the, in, in the rural areas. We have provided in several things. Uh, if I look at my own denomination, we run hospitals, we do borehole projects in villages, we have used our facilities as community centers and other things for various places. Uh, we keep on doing it. We have orphanages, we have vocational schools, we, uh, we introduced the Trocosi project into this country. Uh, even though we've been in the background, nobody knows that Baptists were the leaders in this whole thing. No, we've done a lot in terms of what we do to develop this country. So the politicians should understand the role of the church. We have just become the voice of the voiceless. And daily, we as pastors and as religious leaders have direct encounter with people. After work, they come to church, they raise their complaints, the market is difficult, this is not there, that is not there. We hear all these things. So you go to rural settings, you see roads, you see rural water problems, you see electricity problems, you see the dilapidated schools, you see all these things. So when we are speaking as heads of churches, it is because of what we have seen, what we have heard, and the things that we have observed. So I believe that politicians will be served very well if they are patient enough to listen to us as partners with them. So that the things we point out to them is not just to criticize them, but to draw their attention to the difficulties of our own people. Do you think they're being too hard on you? Well, sometimes they are. Uh, uh, and I believe that is the inability to listen. You know, most of the issues we have raised uh, sometimes are not placed in context. The message is that let us one recognize that we have only one Ghana mm -hmm. and this is the only country we have. Mm -hmm. We cannot run to any other place. So let us approach elections with all the decorum that we need to, pre uh, to ensure that there will be peace in this country before, during and after the election. Everybody must make sure that we conduct ourselves properly, you know. I have said on various platforms that if any politician tells a young man, go and fight, mm -hmm. ask that politician to bring his or her son or daughter <laughs> to lead the fight before you follow. Okay. Because you have your own future mm -hmm. at stake. You know, if I look at where our country is going now mm -hmm. in terms of education, when banks are now employing mm -hmm. graduates mm -hmm. to be tellers, mm -hmm. it tells you that we are heading towards a situation where if you don't take your academic studies serious, you run into trouble. So why do I jump after people when I have my studies? Mm -hmm. So I will encourage a lot of young people, get on to your books, study, seek to look at your own future and what you want to do in future, instead of following these politicians and just be shouting all around the place. This is joining us today with me, Benis Abubedi. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll do some more stories. Please stay on.
Thanks to State on Joe News today. Majority of Ghanaians believe youth unemployment is the main problem an incoming government must address, a survey has revealed. Now, the survey carried out by the Financial Accountability and Transparency Africa identified 16 issues the group described as the real needs of the people of Ghana. Youth unemployment, good quality and purposeful education, uh, accelerated economic growth, agriculture, development, among others, are some of the issues identified in the survey. Speaking at the Manifesto Validation event, Director of FAT, Mr. Albert Kandapa, said a citizen's manifesto was important because it will ensure that projects undertaken by government reflect the needs of the people. Dr. Kandapa said the current constitutional arrangement is such that the president literally controls the destiny of the country from preparation of budgets through the finance minister, through to its implementation. My colleague Joseph Akable uh, was at that program and joins me on the line. Good afternoon, Joseph. Good afternoon. Uh, do we know how the FET arrived at this report? Well, so what first happened is that the organization's team of experts identified five thematic governance challenges and it has to do with public accountability, transparency, inclusiveness, equal opportunities, and human development. The organization then had its team of experts to tease out the entities out of these five uh, governance challenges that they identified. Then they, out of these entities, they tuned it down to 16, then went around the country, interacting with more than 1,000 persons in all the 10 regions of the country, to ask them to have to do a rank the 16 issues in other priorities that they wanted the next government to address. So those 16 issues were ranked, and that is how come we have the youth un unemployment quality and purposeful education among others. And uh, so have you been speaking to any other person at this event apart from uh, Dr. Kandapa? Well, well the point to the other members of the organization, and uh, Mr. Matmegui is also a member of the organization, the point he has been making is the, is the effect that it is very important that we have a citizen manifesto uh, because it's just ab not about the party ideas that we are seeing out and coming out with, but it's in view because the views of the party may not necessarily reflect what is on the ground. And for such a manifesto to come up, it will ensure that whoever wins this year's election, that person will have an opportunity to implement what Ghanaians really want them to implement. And that will ensure that all the concerns and all needs of Ghanaians across the country are addressed. And now, does the report um, have any outlines or recommendations on how the rate of unemployment can be reduced? And that is, is in fact done not just for the unemployment, for all the other challenges that was identified. So when you pick unemployment, for instance, they make a recommendation that we develop a decent work concept for Ghana, which ensures fair income for all, job security, social protection for families, freedom to organize social and trade unions, and quality of opportunity and treatment for all. Not just with the youth unemployment, it runs through each of the problems identified. Once it's identified, a recommendation is made. So when you pick purposeful education, for instance, the recommendation coming in again, they are talking about a need to ensure that we have enough infrastructure in place for the educational sector. So it's the same cut to the other challenges as well. Uh, thank you very much, Joseph. Now let's uh, move to the Ashanti region. The Ashanti Regional Minister, John Alexander Akon, is encouraging Ghanaians to create artificial tourism sites to boost the sector. He says such attractions can be promoted alongside natural facilities to create employment and improve local economies. Mr. Akon was speaking at the 11th Regional Tourism Awards ceremony at Obwasi in the Ashanti region. The regional minister cited outmoded and abandoned equipment in mining communities as potential avenue to explore. Others are Old Parliament House and Fishing Harbour, Salaga Slave Market in the northern region. Mr. Akon says individuals and corporate institutions can take up the challenge separately or go into partnership in such initiatives. And finally, to the flat house, where the first president, Kwame Krumah, used as his office and currently housing the current president, John Dramadi Bahama. Is this not a full tourist attraction from an open bus if you want today? I therefore urge you to see artificial tourism as an alternative. The minister also urged players in the hospitality industry to place a premium on promotion of local cuisines. He says this will require improvement in the quality of traditional catering services. As well as the stakeholders in the tourism industry to strive to equally promote our local cuisine. We should also try to improve their quality. 
of our traditional kitchen establishments, which are popularly referred to as chobas. The theme for this event was excellence in service delivery, key to sustainable tourism. Regional Manager of Ghana Tourism Authority, Ekwo Samson, hinted of a national exercise to train operators for enhanced service delivery. The government, through the Ministry of Tourism and the Ghana Tourism Authority, is organizing training program, nationwide training program, to help us upgrade the skills of all the tourism uh, activities. And I think it's very important, very critical, because that is the way forward if you want to move Ghana tourism forward. Award recipients included Multimedia Group's Insure FM, which for the third time emerged tourism-oriented radio station of the year. The 2016 Tourism Oriented Media of the Year Award radio goes to Insure FM Kumasi. What I would say is that uh, Insure FM is the first point of call when it comes to Ashanti region. We've been able to position the brand in such a way that you would really understand the best radio practices in the region. And in terms of events and outdoors, we've done a lot. That is why we've won this award. So I'm so excited for uh, my brand becoming the best tourism media house in the region. Joy News spoke with some of the award winners. We have been recognized for being the best drinking bar in Ashanti region. Gifts, gifts of nature and God's gifts uh, as a uh, tourist uh, attraction, which we have not explored. Okay. The workers need to say how to talk to the people. No? I'm a nice voice and penny job. I'm a seven system, so you're good. Congratulations to our colleagues at Insura FM in Kumasi. Let's still stay in the tourism sector. The Kinte Festival, also known as Agbemevoza, is an annual celebration by the chiefs and people of Agatime traditional area in the Volta region of Ghana. The festival has been celebrated more than two decades and it promotes the Kinte weaving industry, which continues to be the mainstay of the people in all the 37 towns and villages of the Agatime traditional area. Over the years, the festival has enabled the people of Agatime to host over 10,000 high-profile visitors and tourists within the festival week. He has Elvis Atevoy, secretary of the Paramount Chief of the Agatime traditional area. Come tomorrow, which is Wednesday, two important events will unfold. One I talked about early on, the women and children mini deba will take place at Ajakba, one of our traditional strongholds, to showcase. Then, at the same time when we are back from Ajakba, an important event which we call the weaving competition, Kente weaving competition, will take place. Two competitions will happen simultaneously. One is the speed weaving. We want to see those who can weave very fast, the fastest weaver in terms of speed. And then we are also looking for creativity, new designs and new patterns. How are the present generation doing in terms of new ideas and new creativity? So we will set a stage for people to showcase. Every weaver in Agotime qualifies, both from Ghana and in Togo. Don't forget Agotime cuts across Ghana and, and into Togo. So any of the Agotime citizens are welcome. Uh, we also open the competition to people from outside who believes that they are also competent to come and register and then participate. Then Thursday, Thursday we will do what we call Godigbe. Godigbe simply means how the day of landing. Our forefathers uh, are believed to have landed in Kbong. We will demonstrate on the river Toje at Afegame, our ancestral home, how our forefathers are believed to have landed at Kbong. So we will demonstrate who, who they will come from little canons across the river and land. And then again, we will perform some traditional rites uh, to signify a peaceful landing uh, of our forefathers, and then we, we crown it up. Mm -hmm. Then we are back um, to our uh, capital in Petwe. In the evening, we will do Asiale Tome, which is a beautiful event for old women and maidens. And trust me, the best of our beauties are on the street, showcasing the traditional uses of the cloth. So that will be for Thursday. And then comes Friday. Friday, we will have an event we call the Firing of Musketry. 
You know, our forefathers are great warriors. We fought a lot of wars. We secured our present location through wars by invasion and uh, acquisition. So we will demonstrate how our forefathers fought some of those wars. But the chairman for the occasion, the Grand Deba itself, will be uh, uh, Nene Nagai uh, of uh, Osudoku, uh, former uh, minister Mike Gizo. Uh, Nene Nagai the eighth. He will be the the uh, the, the chairman for, for the, the ground. Occasion. And the Grand Deba of that event will also see President Mahama as his guest of honor. Let's still stay within the tourism industry. Sooner or later, tourists in southern Ghana who wish to see live crocodiles would no longer have to travel all the way to Paga. It follows the discovery of a large crocodile pond in the Akachi North District of the Volta region. The district assembly is, however, seeking private investors to help develop the pond into an ecotourism site under a public-private partnership. The Crocodile Pond is christened at a male's Crocodile Tourist Attraction Site, AMCTAS, after the late president, John Evans at Mills, has an honor to him for creating the district. AMCTAS, which is located in the district capital, Abedakwa, serves as habitat for over 40 friendly crocodiles with the capacity to generate huge revenue, considering it is located near the main Ho Aflao Road. Though not in a good shape, the Atamil's Crocodile Tourist Attraction Site receives about 150 domestic tourists annually, excluding students and pupils. The crocodiles in this pond are lured out with chicken for tourists to see and take photographs with. Togwe Agbo, who is in charge of the Crocodile Pond, explained to join News it was a difficult task trying to tame the crocodiles who adhere to his calls. The district chief executive, James Gunu, noted that the district is implementing policies aimed at developing untapped tourist sites to position the district to become a tourist hub in the Volta region. Some years back they were coming out as and when they so wish, but now these traditionalists will come and then perform some traditional um, you know, uh, practices and then gradually we managed to invite uh, these crocodiles as and when he wants them to come out. So you can see that now we had this um, football team that came and uh, some children came around and wanted to view the live crocodiles. So he's been able to bring them out. So gradually we have improved on the taming of these crocodiles. Chief of Abe Atamvi, Togbe Dunyo, said discovery of the crocodile pond would help create jobs for residents and improve socio-economic activities in the district. Now we are happy uh, with the, the district assembly discovering this, uh, that uh, we have a crocodile inside this dam which uh, can come out um, and then uh, people will come and look at it. The district is also developing small parks and gardens to protect varied species of birds, butterflies and snakes. A former slave market at Ahopo would also be developed with modern guest houses constructed in some towns and villages for tourists. Fred Prime Cyrus report for Joy News. Uh, you're watching Join News today with me, Benes Abubedu.